<laughs> okay, you're okay. host now. Okay, I'll make you co-host. Yes. Okay. Right, there we go. Is it cold in your okay. city today? Or hot? Uh, it's like cloudy, yeah. Is it? I think it's going to rain today, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're getting colder and colder. It's as the days go by. So our temperature is, I think we're going up to about 18 today, which is not particularly warm. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah. Yeah, same here. Uh, as we as winter approaches, we don't have much option but to get cold, and I don't like the cold. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we are not supposed to, uh, you know, get the winters here right now because uh, right now it's uh, it's going to be rainy season. Then uh, in like uh, uh, like it's May, uh, like mm -hmm. uh, this month is hottest month in India, but uh, it's like oh, really? rainy. Okay. Yeah, May and June are going to be like hottest month, but I don't know what's happening. Although I'm in northern part, it's a, like a mountain area. So it's always uh, like it's not always too hot. It's like moderate temperature. That's, but, that's uh, lucky because yeah. sometimes parts of India get very hot, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in like middle India, it's very hot right now. And in plains right now, it's very hot. But I don't know why, uh, what's happening this year. Like, there's a lot of rain all around India. And, yeah. So, the weather like, is changing. Climate is changing. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, climate is changing. Yeah. Um, and every year it changes in a different way. So, you can't really... Um, budget on, oh, it's going to be like oh, this or it's going to be like that. Yeah, I, I just cool. find the rain in, in, in Perth so different to anywhere else in the world that I've ever experienced because uh -huh. we do have a few rainy days, but often it'll be, I, I, will, I had to walk across a field to pick up my, uh -huh. a, a sports field to pick up my grandchildren. I would okay. leave the house, blue sky, sunshine. By the time okay. I got to the middle of the field, cloudy and raining. And by oh, the wow. time I got to the school, Blue sky and clouds gone. So okay. <laughs> it just comes, <laughs> drops, goes. Uh, yes. I've never known that anywhere else in the world. It's quite the strangest yeah. thing. I'm still this world is getting uncertain day by yeah. day. Uh, but I, I just find that fascinating. Also, it often when it's raining, it doesn't rain straight down. It rains at an angle. You, yeah. see, you walk along with your umbrella here, not here, but here yeah. to keep yeah, yourself right. dry. Right. Uh, so it's very funny. I'm learning all sorts of new things since I've been here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's all fun. It's all fun to learn. You can give classes on how to use an umbrella, you know, like in windy <laughs> rains. Yeah. Yes. Uh, don't think your umbrella is for over your head. No, it's more <laughs> either the front of you or the back of you, depending on which way. I tried once walking backwards and I ended up landing on top of a pole because I couldn't <laughs> see where I was going. So I decided in future I would just hold the umbrella far down on my back and keep walking. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, very funny. Uh, anybody watching would find it extremely funny. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're almost in and almost up. Theoretically, we've got quite a, a good class today of, I think it's eight or ten. So okay. I hopefully everybody will come in. Uh, my first class, we had a lovely class uh, for board and busters for seniors. It was really great. Okay. Um, and tomorrow, I'm trying something very new. I'm trying a trivia quiz on oh, movies wow. of old old movies, movies of okay. yesteryear. So okay. that's could be could be great fun. I'm hoping it'll uh, become something okay. of a of, and sort of add to that with the '60s and. Um, old songs and all those sort of things sort of build up on on a a quiz type platform. okay that's great so uh, i think uh, donna donna uh, also do a class on quiz like on music on art and something like that yeah 
Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's excellent. So um, the the learners are at least used to quizzes, which is great. Yep. Yep. They find it very like there are a lot of people in those classes because it uh, because these classes are more interactive as compared to other classes. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, look, I'm I'm going I'm going the interactive way. All my my craft classes for the moment are shelved, and we're going with with the more interactive ones. So yeah, mm -hmm. we're finding out what what people mm -hmm. like and how people yeah. like it, and going with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, right. So it's very interesting. Oh, um, oh, it's one only one minute past. I was starting to wonder. Otherwise, it's you and me today, Harry. So that could be an <laughs> no interesting problem. class as well. You're going to have yeah. to get. You're going to have to use your brain today in in this class because <laughs> I, I do make you think. <laughs> <laughs> No so um, I will give them a few more minutes and then, um, well, do you know any African animals? This one, this particular class is the lesser known African animals. Okay. In the first uh, one, it's the ones like the lion, the leopard, the cheetah, the elephant, uh -huh. those kind of animals. These okay. ones are the lesser known ones that we have. Oh, okay. here comes Diane. That's okay. great. Diane is coming in to join us. Hi, Diane. Welcome to class. Lovely Hello. to have you. Lovely to have you in class. Where are you from, Diane? I'm in um, Arizona. Arizona. Okay. And what's the time in Arizona at the moment? Seven o'clock evening. Okay. So it's not too bad. Okay. Because we're, we're 10 o'clock morning next day. Oh, Way wow. ahead of you. <laughs> So, um, yeah, they, they are, there are a few more coming to join us. I was just saying to Harry, Harry is my TA today. Um, so if there's any technical issues, um, he's there to help with. Um, that these animals we're covering today are the lesser known animals. They, everybody knows the elephant and the lion and the leopard and um, the, um, let me think what other ones I have in there. Uh, the hippo and the, the rhino, all, all the very big, well-known animals. And this particular class, we've gone for the smaller, mostly the smaller, lesser known ones, but lizards? who are just as important. Did you say lizards? No, not lizards, leopards. Oh. Um, <laughs> less, lesser known. Um, no, in this class, we, we've got uh, more of the, the smaller four-legged animals. But some oh. of them, in fact, some of the people when I was chatting to them, because I come from Africa, yeah. and I was talking to some of my friends in South Africa, and I said, oh, these are the animals I'm going to have. And one of my friends says, we don't have those. I said, oh, yes, we do. We have lots of them. You just haven't looked for them. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so it was so interesting that some people don't even realize some of the smaller animals that we have. So I've tried to make it a variety of, of animals uh, for us to do. Mm -hmm. Ah, here comes Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Lovely to have you in class. Uh, Hi there. Thank you. Ah, uh, Ellen, where are you from? Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, excellent. And time there at the moment? It is 10.05. Oh, so you're exactly 12 hours behind me. Okay, right. right. <clears throat> we are expecting others in the class, but we never know um, who's going to come into class. So let's uh, let us start. And whoever comes in and joins us, well, they do. And please keep your microphones on because uh, it's going to be very much interactive. Okay. Um, and uh, Harry is with us. Uh, he's my TA today. And if there's anything you want to ask him, please feel free to just pop it in the chat box. Right, so we're going to share our lesser known uh, wild animals. Now, this time for this particular one, I am not going to go onto a full screen. Um, you'll see why later because we're doing it in a slightly different form. Today, it's your choice as to which one we talk about when. 
and you'll you'll see why at the moment. This particular picture is one of my favorite little animals in Africa, and that is the meerkat. Uh, they are the most gorgeous, most inquisitive little animals that you can come across. But we will be chatting about them shortly. Now, as you know, in Get Set Up, we try and learn from each other. So it's ideal if you have your cameras on. But if you don't, if you interact, that's also just great. Um, if you can request a recording after the class. And if you are joining by live streaming, the best way is to actually join. It's free and then and register for a class because then you can be interactive with us. Get Set Up isn't paid to promote any products, but in this particular set, I don't um, talk about anything except animals, so it's fine. Right, a little about me. Some of you know me, some of you don't. Um, I live in Perth, Australia with my husband, Michael, who's also a guide. And um, we moved here three years ago from South Africa. Uh, I had lived in South Africa for 63 years, and I came over to help look after my granddaughters. Um, I've been an educator for 44 years. I still do some educating, but in Get Set Up, I don't have to educate. I can just share. And for me, that is a very much better uh, platform to work on, to share with my peers and interact with people. So that for me is great. I enjoy creating and making things, including puzzles. Um, I have a great love of animals. That's why the African series, the Australian series, the encounters with animals. And on Friday, there's like a social hour of birds in my garden. Um, because, of course, in Australia, we have parrots that are free to fly anywhere they wish. And I have the most beautiful birds coming into my garden. Um, so that's a little about me. Now, I need you to look at these animals as I mentioned them, because in the next slide, I'm going to give you silhouettes of these animals. And you're going to, from the silhouettes, ask to discuss the different animals. And we'll see how many of the silhouettes you, you know. And those that you don't, well, it, when we've done the ones we know, we will go on to the ones that we can't recognize from the picture. So the first picture we've got here is a warthog, a very lively little animal. He, um, when he's running, he's got a little white flick on the end of his tail and his tail is always absolutely up straight. So through the bush, you see this little white flick going and you know that it's the warthog on his way. Mm -hmm. You also get the wild dog, uh, which is a very beautiful animal with rounded ears. They live in little packs. We have our national uh, animal of South Africa, which is your springbuck with the horns that are curved in at the top. The next row, we've got the artfark. Um, he is a long-nosed little creature with big ears. Uh, we have the wildebeest, uh, one of the many uh, different types of antelope and, and buck we get. But wildebeest is separate from the antelope. He's kind of different somehow. Um, we have the pangolin, which is really beautiful. And this is the one that I told my friend I was doing. And she said, but we don't have pangolins. I said, oh, yes, we do. We have a lot of them. So uh, it's surprising people in your own country don't necessarily know them. Then, of course, our little meerkat, who is always sitting up to see what he's missing, wanting to know what he's seeing. We have the jackal. You get the spotted jackal and you get the back, black back jackal. Very important to the ecosystems. We also get the uh, black, oh, sorry, this is a hyena. The first one's a hyena. He's a hyena. And we get the black back jackal. And lastly, the largest flightless bird in the world, the ostrich. So before we talk, let's see, who can tell me any of these animals? Can you pick <laughs> up any of them from their silhouettes? Meerkat is first. Ah, meerkat is first. <laughs> right. Let's go down and talk about our little meerkat. All right. The meerkat family. Yes, they are awesome. 
they live in groups uh, together, uh, uh, quite a large family, and uh, they are very much dominated by a leading alpha male and alpha female. They, they lead the pack, and the, the group of meerkats is called a mob, and it's very appropriate because it looks like a mob of people coming towards you. But the exciting thing is they have a lot of predators that eat them. So the most important job of all is to be the sentry. Only one is um, made the sentry and he or she stands there and they watch and they've got different sounds for different uh, predators. If it's coming from the air, such as an eagle or an owl, they will let you know. If it's coming from uh, on the ground, like slithering along the ground, which would be a snake, they would let you know. And if it's something bigger than that, that they feel is uh, going to be um, like a jackal or something like that, they let off another sound. So each time there is a sound according to what a threat is coming and literally within seconds there isn't a mere cat in sight mm -hmm. they have lots of entrances into their underground burrow and they're gone and then now, is, that, is that one a male or female it can be either it can okay. be either and then when they think maybe it might be safe what they do is the the sentry comes out now, if the thing hasn't gone, the sentry is gone. It's breakfast for whatever. But wow. um, if, then the sentry obviously changes because that sentry has now gone. But if it's safe, then he will let or she will let out another call. And again, everybody will come out to play. Um, they're omnivorous, so they eat a large variety of different things that they like to eat. Um, and their life stands, it's about eight years as long as they are not consumed on the way. Uh, one of the interesting things is how they sleep. They sleep on top of each other. Even if it's outside or inside, they don't sleep separate. They make a pile, a stack of meerkats, and they sleep in the stack. Um, which is quite the strangest thing to see, even on a hot day, to see a whole lot of meerkats all stacked up on top of each other. And that's, that is their way of sleeping. Any questions about the meerkats? How do they um, cleanse each other or themselves? Do they bathe or are they like? They, they, they kind of, from what I've only seen I can't I, I could be wrong they they like a monkey they scratch and clean and um, get okay. themselves clean okay. that way okay um, and that that's what what I've I've only ever seen with them they they kind of look like a, a, a mongoose in other countries people call them a mongoose um, but these they they really are the most awesome little creatures and intelligent and they're always up look 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 what can I see who can I see you drive along and then suddenly you see all these little bodies sitting on a rock looking at the road going past or whatever they, they are really so sweet and and they have quite a large litter of babies um and so they then the other not necessarily mom and dad look after them all the others it's it's part of the, the family affair that everybody helps to look after the babies. That's so it's, it's a really cute way of doing it. it, it it's really lovely. And, and they, they get themselves together that way. Right. Um, uh, hi, Sunita. How are you? Ah, Sunita's not talking. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else got something they would like to oh. ask? Uh, I yes. was going to say at our zoo here in Phoenix, there's a lot of meerkats and I just love to sit out there and watch them. They're right near the picnic area where you can get really close to them. Oh, they are just so interesting. They are. They are, for me, one of the most interesting animals that we have. I love all animals and I, I've worked with animals. I've been around animals, but for me, the little meerkat has got this little, just the whole, now, Interestingly enough, my two little dogs, and I haven't seen many dogs doing this, they sit for hours like the meerkats. <laughs> they come up and they just sit, feet up, and they watch. And that's how they'll sit. They're oh not begging. 
they're looking and they they're French bulldogs. So they're not sort of a dog you would normally think would sit up, but they can sit for ages sitting up like that. <laughs> and uh, we actually call it meerkat. When they, they go to have something, we say meerkat and up they go and they sit and, and, and do it. it. It's just too cute for words, uh, but they really do look like a meerkat. All right. Who has another animal that they know from here? The ostrich. Oh, the ostrich. Yes, definitely the ostrich. He's page 14. Now, this is a new way of doing this. Right. Ostriches we see often, well, we saw often because they're mainly in desert creatures. So as soon as you were in the Eastern Cape or um, a, around the area, the drier area, then you would um, see, see the ostriches. There were many ostrich farms as well. Um, because the feathers are used for feather dusters, for in in Las Vegas, where you've got those big feathers that the, I, I don't know if they make fake ones now, but you, they used to use the ostrich feathers and, and uh, dye them the different colors. The male ostrich has black feathers and the female ostrich has brown. Like most birds, the male is always the most beautiful of the two. Females are usually quite dowdy. If they, they have, take those feathers, can they, do they replace, you know, like, do yes. they Yes. Back. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, they grow back. So you can, they can be plucked and then back they come. More feathers come along afterwards. So, yes, they – and the, the wingspan, when they've got their, with their arms open or their wings open, is over six feet. It's oh big. They, they look – they use that as a terror tactic when they come at somebody. They're big enough to frighten you with those huge – wings flapping, even though they don't take off the ground. They certainly um, have the, the, the capacity to do it, and they can give you a really nasty kick. You do not want to be kicked by an ostrich. They yeah. kick you really hard. Um, so uh, they also have very long eyelashes over their eyes because of it being a desert. There's lots of sandstorms. And so their eyes are protected by these beautiful double layer of eyelashes that they have. They have two layers of eyelashes and that protects them very well indeed. An ostrich egg is this size. They, you can, it's equivalent to 14 chicken eggs. So if you make an omelette with an ostrich egg, you are making an omelette with 14 chicken eggs. If you have a fried ostrich egg, you have a plate like this with one very, very large egg in the middle of it. It'll take up the whole pan and you will have your fried ostrich egg. They taste not quite the same as an ordinary egg. They certainly have a slightly different taste to it. I'm not that keen on the taste. I, I can't explain why. It's just different. And for me, it's not as nice. Other people really love ostrich egg. But a lot of the eggs, what they do is they, they make a hole top and bottom, blow the egg out from, from there, and paint the eggs. They are used very much uh, as a tourist attraction because of their size. And then they paint ostriches on it. And many people take those back um, with them when they leave. How many eggs do they lay per like week or month? Um, they lay, I've seen sort of four or five eggs in a, a, a nest. Oh. And so they, yeah, they, they lay quite a few eggs in, in their nest. Um, and then it's, it's throughout the year that they lay the eggs. They, they, they're almost like a chicken, not quite every day, but they certainly lay them, them often. Okay. Uh, so they've got that. They are omnivores. They eat everything and anything. And anything shiny, they will eat. They will eat anything shiny in order to, to have um, – it's one of the, the interesting things about them. They swallow rocks in order to digest the food that they have, have eaten. They can't eat – they don't have the facility Ouch. to eat. So they are like a crocodile. They swallow the, 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 the rocks. The rocks then rub together and destroy whatever is they've consumed, and then their body is able to absorb it. 
They go for um, many days without water. They are able to survive with water, without water. Um, they have obviously an area within their belly where the water is stored that they have. So they've always got a constant stock of water so that if they go somewhere and they don't have water, they are actually okay. They must be related to camels. Yeah, <laughs> I think the same. <laughs> I think exactly. You know, there are so many interesting animals that have adapted to the desert. Um, in Australia, there's the thorny, the thorny devil. He um, gets most of his moisture from the ants he eats. But if he does get liquid, because of the, the, the spines on him, all the spines have little channels that take the liquid to his mouth. So wherever it, he rubs up against something and gets water on his um, skin, then it goes into the channels and all the channels lead to his mouth. So he doesn't actually drink water. It's, it just comes down and into his mouth through these channels. And so it, what, it's quite, like, what organism is that? He's, he's called a thorny devil. He's a little lizard. Lizard, okay. Mm, he's a, a type of lizard and such an interesting little creature. People say that you put, you're like an ostrich, you put your head in the sand. Um, we're not too sure whether it actually does bury its head or its head is just going into the sand to pick up something that it saw. And so the head is sort of buried in the sand for a few minutes. But it's a lovely saying to bury your head in the sand like an ostrich. I never knew that was from an ostrich. I've heard bury your head in the sand, but I didn't know that. I oh, know it comes from an ostrich, yeah. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Be like an ostrich, bury your head in the sand. <laughs> Any question about the ostrich before we move on? Okay. Now, any other animal that you know? Uh, uh, wildebeest. Wildebeest, right. Wildebeest is number 10. Right. Yeah, wildebeest, there are two types of wildebeest. There's the black wildebeest and the blue wildebeest. In South Africa, we get the blue wildebeest. Its coloring is different. The one is a much darker brown and the other one is a grayish blue. So you get the two types of wildebeest. Also, their horns are slightly different. The one set of horns are on the side of them, and the other set is in the front. The um, black wildebeest, the horns are in the front. The blue wildebeest, the horns are on the side. Um, they love to be together. They um, uh, have they have two, three different types of of. Uh, groups that you have. You've got the territorial bulls who stick together. Um, the female herds, because the bulls don't live with the, the females. And then the bachelor boys who are out to see what they can find. So <laughs> you've got the old men, the young men, and all the ladies. So that's basically how they gather, which is so interesting and so different. Not much different than any other culture. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Quite true. Now, which one? I guess the black ones were in uh, Lion King. Uh, yeah, yeah, they had those those front horns. But the blue wildebeest is is from definitely from South Africa, uh, Southern Africa, and they also live for twenty years. Um, so they live a fairly good life. Um, they've got a good lifespan uh, as they go along through their lives. Uh, so they they very they're very beautiful. Um, and uh, lovely creatures to have around. So do right. they just wander? or do They, they like just wander. They just wander across the savannah. They, they just walk along and in their groups and just keep going. Wherever the, the grass is good, that's where they go. And if they find some other grass, then they migrate that way. And they just, we, in the Kruger Park, there's so ma many hectares of um, land that they can roam over. That, that is is the best for them. And their predators for them are the lion and the hyena and sometimes the wild dog or the cheetah. The wild dog, although they're so small, that when they hunt in a pack, they are very dangerous. Um, and so the hyena, he will come to the, the pickings afterwards. They don't kill for themselves. They okay. come, come and clean up. They're, they're the, the, the vacuum cleaners of, of nature 
Oh, the, so the wasn't hyenas. there like a like in um, Lion King? Wasn't there like a stampede of the wildebeest? Well, the the wildebeest do stampede, but up in the north of Africa, across the Serengeti. Okay. Uh, every year they migrate from the east to, uh, from the yeah from the east to the west, and then they come back again. Uh, and it's not only wildebeest; it's wildebeest. It's a, a many other types of, of uh, antelope, the giraffe, the zebra. They all migrate together in an in, incredible migration. People go there just to see it. They go up in balloons to have a look at it and watch it from above. It is quite something to see. That's up in, in the north of Africa. Okay, thank you. Pleasure. <laughs> Lovely that you're asking. Right, another animal. Who's got another animal that they know? Aardvark. The aardvark, right. Our little aardvark. He's a very cute little thing. Um, he lives He lives in a burrow and he always goes into the burrow backwards because he likes to be able to see what's coming past, because it's no use having your bum sticking out and along comes a predator and there's no way you can fight them off. So he goes in front, he goes in backwards and he watches to see what, what is there. He's not the most beautiful of creatures. He hasn't got good eyesight, but he's got excellent hearing. Um, and uh, they're quite solitary and they're nocturnal. Um, and they make a little bleating sound when they are um, upset or they're worried, they will bleat to you. They live from 18 to 23 years. Um, so they live a pretty good life. And the, uh, the predators are humans, lions, leopards, hyenas, and of course, the python. We have lots of those um, that we have. We have the, uh, um, and the cobras. Those, those ones are, are, make it, are very dangerous for the little artfark. So how um, big is an aardvark? Like is an art, a yeah, he's, he is um, about 1.5 meters in length, which is three to five meters uh, long. Um, and across, he's about 24 inches. So he's quite narrow, but he's quite long. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's a long, long animal. Do people eat them? I've never eaten artvark, but people eat strange things. Um, you know, each different culture. In, in South Africa, we've got an amazing thing of having 11 official languages and 11 official cultures. And each culture has something different. So we may not eat it, but some of the other cultures may. And I'm pretty sure that some of them do. Um, they they eat artvark, but I haven't eaten artvark. Um, but yes, certainly, maybe the Zulus or the Kosa or the Sutu they would would eat it as part of their their cultural food because they eat a lot of very interesting uh, and different uh, creatures as part of their food. So uh, I've yeah. heard people refer to bush meat. Is that what it would be? Um, no, uh, bush meat. Um, I would have said it would have been your your different buck, your impala, um, your uh, spring buck. Those sort of th things. It's it's game. We call it game, oh. game meat, and game meat is all all the animals that. Well, yeah, bush meat would be anything that come that is wild, wild animal is called game and then you'd say oh this is game it's impala or this is game and it's crocodile and this is game and it's giraffe and this is game and it's they they when we you have certain restaurants where people come particularly tourists and they can then taste any kind of animal they have the most amazing things on the menu um, that people can try um, so yes, as that uh, art fork could be amongst those recipes, definitely. So, so the, the snakes that eat them, like the um, cobra and the, what was the it? Cobra and, and and the python. Yeah. Okay, do they strangle them and then like yeah. the, munch the on python? Them? The python would strangle. The cobra would spit uh, poison. So okay. the one would poison it, and the other one would strangle it. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they have very, very strange looking babies. They 
<laughs> they're hairless and they're pink. <laughs> but they have a long gestation period uh, of, of the animals. A lot of animals only have a three-month gestation period, but theirs is much longer. They look like they'd be more marsupial, but they're not. No, they're not. They're not. Um, uh, Australia is known for its marsupials. We have so right. many here. It's unbelievable. Um, it, virtually every animal is a marsupial. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you only hear are... about kangaroos, you know? Oh, no, no, no. If you come to my animal class, you'll be amazed. My first class is purely marsupials. Oh. And I think there's 14 different varieties there. And in the second class, there are some more. Uh, so, yes, no, Australia has the most amazing array of marsupials. All right. I'll I also to only thought room. of the kangaroo as being a marsupial, and that was it until yeah. I got here and discovered that, wow, there are just so many marsupials around. Even the koala is a marsupial. Oh, I think I did know that. Yes. Thank yeah, you. The, the koala is a marsupial as well. So, yeah. Lots of, of different ones. Right. Anybody got another idea? We've done quite a few. We've just got a few to go. Mm, there's one missing here. I've got it on the next page and I haven't got it on this page. And so I'm going to go for that one right now. And that's the wild dog. It's got the rounded ears. Um, so I'm going to hop, hop into the wild dog uh, line because um, they are so beautiful and they you don't see them that often because they they are somewhat endangered they they're definitely increasing now but what they did go through a stage where they were pretty endangered and that was was quite scary um, but they are really beautiful dogs uh, they you certainly wouldn't want them as a pet they've got a very sharp bite um, they live in very large packs of up to uh, 50 individuals, and they're very, very social. Um, and they, they have up to 12 puppies are born at a time. And interesting in this, only the dominant male and female may breed. The others do not. They are the nursemaids and the looker-afterers and the everything else. If by any chance somebody doesn't do as they are told, they are sent off to make their own pack somewhere else. So only the dominant pair are allowed to be the ones to, to mate, which I find so interesting. Um, if they're one of the most efficient predators of all. They go from things like an earlunt, which I will show you a bit later. It's a really big buck. It's a solid buck. I wouldn't even think of looking at that. And if you think of a little wild dog, you wouldn't think it would go for that. But they, when they hunt in a pack, they are very dangerous. They can take down anything. Um, and so it is, it is very, very interesting to, to see the wild dog. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, um, because they are not as um, prevalent as many of the others, like the blackback jackal or the uh, hyena. All right. Now, another one. Anybody got an idea? We've got, still got, let's go to the next one here mm -hmm. and see if you can now decide which ones we haven't done. Hyena. The hyena, hyena. yeah, we better. haven't done the hyena yet. The hyena is number Nine. 11. There's my hyena. Yeah, now you get two types of hyena. You get the brown hyena. And uh, they all the hyenas are scavengers. They forage on, and they they quite um, wily. They'll wait. The lion will still be eating, and they'll come and snip a piece and run away. And the lion will roar at them, and then they wait and watch while he's got a mouthful. They'll dive in, grab a piece of meat, and run away. And then when the carcass has been emptied by the the lions and they've moved on, then in come the hyenas and they finish off that, that carcass. That carcass doesn't exist by the time they are finished. They've got very strong jaws with very strong teeth. You also get a spotted hyena um, and they, they are known as the laughing hyena because of the sound they make. It's like a cackling laugh of 
or I would have thought a witch. It's a, a really, it's almost an eerie sound when you hear it at night. We used to hear both the jackal and the hyena, uh, and we lived just out of the city um, in sort of open lands, uh, and we could still hear, they, they, they were roaming freely still, and they, they, you would hear them at night, and you'd hear them calling to each other, and you'd know whether they were close to your property or far from your property by, by the, where the calls were coming from, uh, which was very interesting. So they they look like they they are sulk, uh, skulking along. They've got the back legs lowered, and they walk in a very peculiar fashion. Their the lower back their back slopes downwards, and their back legs are kind of bent as they go. So they look as if they're slinking along. They they sort of oily creatures, but they're actually very beautiful creatures. Uh, many people don't like hyena just because of the way they look. They get kind of scared of them. So uh, any questions on, interesting, the hyenas don't eat together. They don't go and find food together. Everybody for themselves. Everybody goes to eat where they want to, where they can. And sometimes you'll find two or three going for the same carcass, but they do, certainly don't go to, to find it together. But you can see from that mouth open on that um, spotted hyena, those mm. teeth are sharp. And I would not like to be bitten by something like that. The little babies of the brown hyena are so cute. They're fluffy and black almost. They look like a little fluffy dog. While the um, spotted hyena, they look rather like the baby leopard cubs or cheetah cubs. It looks that sort of mm -hmm. coloring. Very cute, but be careful. Remember all wild animals, you give them a wild, wide birth. They are wild and it is their territory. You are encroaching into their place. So that if you give them the respect, they will be very happy with you. But if you don't respect them, then you can be expected to have a problem. But I've had many wonderful encounters with animals uh, along the way. So next one, which one haven't we done? We've done the meerkat. We haven't done the pangolin. So let's have a look at the little pangolin. He's a very cute creature. Number 13 is my pangolin. This is the one that a lot of people don't even know exists. And there are a lot of them in the Eastern Cape, but people just are not aware of them. They have these overlapping scales that are razor sharp. And if they lash out with those, you can get a nasty cut from that. Um, they also have a scent gland at the back, like the um, skunk, and they will let off a nasty smell if you get too close to them. They live mainly on um, ants, but only specific ants. They don't just go for any ant. There are only certain types of ant that they are prepared to eat. And they've got the long tongue to go in and get. But the one thing I love is the babies. The babies travel, you know, in a, in a marsupial, they travel in a little pouch. Not the pangolin. He sits on mom's tail. And he travels along on mom's back or mom's tail. And you'll find him sleeping, holding on to those razor sharp um, edges and away he goes. Um, the pangolin are, are quite lucky because they, not many creatures can get to them. If they are in danger, they roll up in a ball. And they can stay in that ball for hours. And if something is hungry, it doesn't wait around. It takes off and goes to find something that is less likely to hurt it. Because as soon as they start patting it, they cut their paws on, on those razor sharp things. And they learn very quickly that that's not a good idea. So pangolins uh, are very fortunate in that they don't have too many enemies. But they are such interesting creatures. Any questions on the pangolin? Are they related to anteaters? Yes, they are. Um, related. Yeah, they, uh, they are known uh, in some countries as, as a, um, a, a scaly anteater. 
Um, some countries call them a scaly anteater, but in, okay. in South Africa, they're called the pangolin. Yeah, the predators are leopards and hyenas, but uh, these people, they have to wait because the only way they can get in is to get in at the soft underbelly. So they've got to find a way of getting in through that hard crust to get to the body inside. So they, although they do have predators, they, they are able to look after themselves pretty well. Right, uh, we've done the warthog, the wildebeest, the ostrich, the jackal. We've got two to go, just the jackal and the antelopes. So let's have a look at the jackal next. He's number 12. There he goes. The blackback jackal is actually a very beautiful looking creature. He's very skinny. Um, sometimes if they've just eaten, they look kind of full. But uh, most of the time, they look like a skinny dog. Um, and then they, they feed on um, uh, small mammals, reptiles, birds, eggs, uh, fruit, and then any leftovers from a kill, they will happily, or if there's roadkill, they'll very happily eat that as well. But they don't actually go out and kill an animal themselves, uh, the small, except for small mammals, but nothing big. Um, they, they, anything bigger than probably a, a rat or a mouse, well, mouse is a bit smaller than a rat, but that sort of size they will happily go for, um, but they won't uh, go and attack uh, a, a jackal or I mean, a hyena or anything that's, that or wild dog. They're too big for them. They only go for something small. Um, they have between one and six puppies that are born in from August to October. So they've got a very set gestation period. Uh, theirs is only two months and they are socially monogamous. So they and a pair of jackals will bond for life. They socially, if they're in a group, they stay in that group. They don't go to this group and then decide, no, I don't like that group and go and find another group. Once they're in a group, they stay in that group that particular group that they are with. So that is also interesting because quite often in many of the animal worlds, they wander away and form or join new groups, but not the jackal. They stay together as, as a family, basically. They look right. a little bit like the um, coyotes we have here in Arizona. Yep, yeah. They, they do look a lot like a coyote, yeah. and they probably behave similarly to a coyote, I would think. Yeah. Um, and so, but again, beware, don't take them for granted. Then I couldn't leave out the antelope because, uh, but I couldn't choose one because it's not fair. So I've given you a variety of antelope to look at. You can tell them by their horns and by their coloring, the different types of antelope that you've got. So at the top, we've got the impala. Those breed like rabbits. There are always hundreds of impala around, which is just as well because they, they are the main food for lions, leopards, cheetahs, uh, hyenas, any animal that will go hunting will head for an impala because they, they're easy to, they're small enough to catch easily. Uh, and with the speed that they've got, they can definitely outrun an impala. And they would, they'll find a whole herd of impala, they'll scatter the herd and see which one looks the weakest, and then they'll pounce on that one. So that they, impalas are, are often um, the form of food for many of the, the wildlife that are there. The second one that we've got there is an inyala. And Inyala looks like he's got a, some binoculars on his eyes. He's got these white, <laughs> white eyes. And, and the bottom part of his chin is also quite white. So he, and he's, he's furry. He, he's not smooth like most of the other ones that have short hair. He's got quite a lot longer hair. And he does have stripes, but they are much lighter than when we get to the kudu you can see the kudu has very very distinct lines on him then the one with the straight horns like this is a hemp's book so you can always tell him and again the white around the face the white on the nose very distinctive markings each one has its own um, and 
similar to the Chems book, you've got that one, you've got to look. If he's got straight horns, it's a Chems book. If he's got curvy horns, then he's a Bonto book. And he's, uh, or Bless book, and he's got this white face to him and a white bum at the back. Um, and then I, at the bottom below the Bonto book, we've got the <laughs> this is called a water buck, but most people call it the toilet seat because it looks like it's sat on a toilet seat as it's been painted because it's got this target on it on its back. Um, and um, it is a really beautiful buck. It really is a, a very gentle buck, but you can see it for miles with this white target on, on its bottom. Um, it doesn't have a, any horns that you would talk about it's uh, almost a flat headed and um, all females have very very small horns now earlier I spoke about an ear lunt and I said that the wild dog take down an ear lunt this is the animal that the wild dog take down it really is a huge animal um, and uh, but they and they are beautiful. They look almost like a Brahmin bull um, in size. They are that big, um, but uh, also again, magnificent creatures. The springbok is known for its color, where it's white on the belly, got a dark brown stripe in the middle, and light brown on the back. And they spring. They jump beautifully and that is the national um, animal of South Africa. Below it is the kudu and the kudu is, is a beautiful animal with a black uh, with white stripings coming off like somebody's paint poured paint on the back and some of the paint has dripped down off the back. The female does not have the horns the male has always have the horns females horns are little but I had a, a time with, a, um, uh, we were camping in a, an area that is attached to the Kruger Park where the fence is down and so the animals from the Kruger can come into the park. You can either have a house there or you can camp there. And we were camping. And uh, the people were complaining around us bitterly that they're, they're having to replace their hoses, uh, their garden hoses regularly because the baby lion cubs come and chew holes in it. And then when they want to use it, it sprays everywhere but where they want. But um, you could hear them as well during the night. But we were eating. We just finished eating some food. We were sitting there um, having some lunch. And um, what happened was that uh, sorry, early evening, my friends' all, eyes all got big and they said, don't turn around and don't be frightened, but there's an animal coming to eat off your plate. And I thought they were joking. The next thing over my shoulder comes this head and it helped itself to a piece of corn that was on my plate and off it went. And it was a female kudu. It was the most awesome thing to happen. And it was just so different uh, as this kudu helped herself to the piece of corn. The last two animals that we've got there is we've got a sable. Uh, they are very elegant black ones with a back turning horn. And then your little bushbuck, tiny little bushbuck that we have. So th there are many different types of buck that you or antelope that you find in Southern Africa and throughout Africa for that matter. They really are lovely animals. Anybody got any questions about the animals? That, uh, the bush buck you were just talking about, how big are they? Oh, uh, they're small. They're like the size of a dog. Oh, uh, right. They're small. They really are small, the little bushbuck. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful little creatures. So they, they really are, are, are exquisite little baby, baby animals. <laughs> right. Oh, thank you, everyone, for being in class. Much appreciated that thank you, you came to class today. Um, lovely to have you. If you've got any things that you uh, or pictures that you've taken in zoos about different animals, you can always send pictures to Liz or animals that you've got in your own country that you, we might find interesting. Send them to Liz at Get Set Up and she'll be able to pass them on to me or put them on a blog for us. 
Some of the related classes are board and busters for seniors, African animals, Australian animals, encounters with wildlife, and uh, birds in my garden uh, is on Friday. Um, and then movie trivia is my next one tomorrow. So that there are some interesting and different ones coming up. Um, you afterwards will get some class notes, um, also some ideas of other classes, but they're random. So they might not be anything attached to me. We get given 10 to choose from and they, they come and go. So you have no idea what's going to come up next. And there's a feedback sheet if you'd like to say something about the class or something you liked about it or didn't or was something new that you would like to add to it. Please feel free to fill in the feedback. A new feature that's been added is to invite a friend when you book, you can now invite a friend to join you in class. And if there's any other community that you think may be able to get some benefit from the class, uh, please let to help it get set up know about it. And if you want a recording, it's also at help at getsetup.io. Suggestions for new classes, also great to be put there as well. So thank you very much. Lovely to have had you in class. Anything you'd like to say before we, we close for the day? I really enjoyed this. I also took your Australian um, animals classes the other day. It was so nice. I'm learning so much. Oh, great. I'm glad you enjoy them. Thank you, Diane, for the feedback. That is excellent. Um, yes, yes, thank you, I, Sue. This was delightful. Oh, great. Well, I hope you'll join us for some of the other classes as well. Uh, that would be awesome to have you in class again. Thank you, Harry, for being in class with us as well. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Have a great day. Yeah, uh, Harry, you're going to say something. <laughs> it's been very quiet. Thank you. A pleasure. Right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank Bye you. for now. Thank you. Bye -bye.